Hello guys, welcome to Perf Metrics, the core performance testing YouTube channel. Continue with the tips and tricks video series. In this video, I will provide the information on how to calculate dynamic pacing in performance testing. Although I have already covered the calculation of fixed pacing in my previous video, whose link is given in the description section of this video. Before starting the actual topic, better to have a quick overview of pacing. Actually, the term pacing represents a delay between two iterations which control the user session rate at the server end. Pacing is also used to control the transaction per second to achieve the defined transaction rate in the NFR list. Another important purpose of pacing is to save the system from unrealistic creation of back-to-back -back user session. Now, let's have a look at the type of pacing. So, there are two types of pacing. First is a delay or fixed pacing, in which a fixed period of delay is given between two iterations and it can be directly calculated by a given formula. That is, number of users divided by iterations per second subtracted by the sum of iteration response time and total think time. The second type of pacing is interval or dynamic pacing. Practically, we cannot calculate dynamic pacing directly due to its varying nature. Hence, we calculate the required time taken by an iteration to complete. The calculated value needs to be provided in the performance testing tool and the task of the tool is to automatically adjust the pacing or delay by subtracting the defined time from iteration execution time. To calculate this value, the formula is number of users divided by iterations per second. Using this formula, we can get how much time an iteration should take to complete. And this time includes response time of all the requests, total think time and dynamic pacing. Now let's see what are the inputs required to calculate and then verify the calculated dynamic pacing. So there are four inputs which are number of user. This number can uh, you can get from NFR, iterations per second. Again this number you can get from NFR, response time that is total time taken by an iteration to complete. This time you can get by running the script once without any think time. And the last one is total think time. For that, you can sum up all the think time or delay between two iterations which you have used in the script. Now put the number of users and iterations per second values in the formula and calculate the time taken by one iteration. Here, we got 120 seconds value in which an iteration must be completed, which includes the sum of response time of all the requests, total think time and dynamic pacing. Another two metrics which are total think time and response time are required to validate the condition of dynamic pacing. Ideally, the sum of total think time and response time should not be more than the calculated time to complete one iteration. In this case, the sum of total think time and response time is 50, where time to complete one iteration is 120 seconds, which is more than 50. Hence, it satisfies the condition. Now, insert this value in the setting of the performance testing tool to implement dynamic pacing. Before going to see how to implement pacing logic in the performance testing tool, let's see the demonstration. So here you can see once the iteration along with think time is completed, then the performance testing tool waits for 70 seconds before starting the second iteration. So in the ideal case, we can get the total execution time is 360 seconds. But practically, response time varies due to various performance issues, which is adjusted by dynamic pacing. 
and keep the total execution time same which does not impact to TPS or transaction per second. Now there are three possible cases for dynamic pacing. Case 1. This is an ideal condition when the time to complete one iteration is more than the sum of response time and total think time. In case the response time is increased until condition falls, then dynamic pacing adjusts it and the tool will wait for the remaining time before triggering next iteration. During the load test, if this condition is satisfied, then there is no impact on TPS. Case 2 When the time to complete one iteration is equal to the sum of response time and total think time, then dynamic pacing becomes zero and the tool will trigger the next iteration back to back without any delay. Case 3 This is the worst case when the time to complete one iteration is less than the sum of response time and total think time. Again, tool will trigger the next iteration back to back without any delay which will impact to expected TPS. To maintain the workload model in the first case, calculate the pacing in such a way that a sufficient margin should be there to adjust the increased response time. The margin end should not be too high else this will keep the application ideal for the long time. Now let's discuss the advantages and limitations of dynamic pacing. So the advantage of dynamic pacing over fixed pacing is even if the response time increases up to the calculated iteration time, the expected TPS can be achieved. The limitation of dynamic pacing is if the sum of response time and total think time crossed the calculated iteration time value, then the expected TPS may be unachieved. To avoid such a situation, you need to keep the two conditions in the mind while calculating the pacing. These two conditions we have already discussed in this video. Now come to the implementation part. To implement the dynamic pacing in load runner, you need to go to runtime setting and then pacing tab and select start the new iteration at fixed or random interval and provide the calculated iteration value. The value can be calculated from the formula which we discussed before. In Jmeter, you need to write the custom code by adding bin shell or JSR223 sampler at the end. I will provide the code in the next video. In NeoLoad, you can define pacing in the container. NeoLoad automatically adds dynamic delay in case the container's duration is less than the defined value. As suggested before, dynamic pacing is always preferred and recommended over fixed pacing. Hence, it is good to choose dynamic pacing option in your performance test. So that's it in this video. For more tips and tricks for performance testing and engineering, stay connected with Perfmetrics, the core performance testing YouTube channel.